Another way to deal with the heat wave would be to hide in the basement and film videos. Just saying. Hi everyone, welcome back to Linda Libraloka. Today I wanted to address the changes you need to make to your skincare routine to adapt it to the summer. I guess you have heard the saying before, whenever you change your wardrobe, you should change your skincare routine. Which is fine, but if you're anything like me, I have way more cleansers than I own shoes, so I think we need to be a little more specific here. And what helps me with these kind of tips is to understand why we need to change our skincare routine. Because after all, skin type is genetic. So I have the same genes I have in summer than I have in winter. What is it that I need to change and what kind of new problems is my skin possibly facing? And this is where the contributing factors come in. This is mainly the weather and our lifestyle changes. Warmth, sun and the more light that you have in the days means you spend more time outdoors, which means you are exposed to more UV rays. And UV rays increase sebum production, so your skin gets more oily. Your skin feels more oily anyway because of the heat. It's not that actually your sebum production increases in the heat, but the sebum gets more liquidy. So you can feel it and see it a lot more because it can flow more freely from the pores. Which sounds kind of disgusting now that I think of it. You're sweating a lot more because, again, the heat, which means there's more dirt that trapped on your face and your skin is more prone to dehydration, actually in the hot summer as well as in the very cold winters. Why? Because wind, chlorine water, salt water and the sun can disrupt your skin's barrier and lead to dehydration. Now that we have settled what the problem is, we need to address how to deal with it. The first thing, more UV exposure, is kind of easy to answer, SPF. We all know that. But I think it's really, really important that you know that you need to wear your SPF every day that you spend outside. And this is where I say comfort over filters. I know there is this whole debate, mineral against chemical, I'm not going into semantics here, or oxybenzone or all that stuff. I'd say any sunscreen is better than no sunscreen, so find one that you are happy with and that your skin likes, that doesn't break you out, and even if it's not the latest fancy filter, it's better than a fancy filter sunscreen that you never wear because it feels like on your face. For me it's easy. I have my photoprotector is the infusion water SPF 50 which has the European Union UVA rating so I know that it has a decent amount of UVA protection, it has a decent amount of UVB protection, it's alcohol free. The filters in it are not my favorite, it's not the most modern but I apply it, it sinks in, it works well with makeup and I just don't feel it so this is and forever will be my go-to sunscreen but forever like in skincare edit forever, you know that. Another thing is don't forget to reapply. And as much as I love it, I will not reapply that on the full face of makeup. So this is where these face mists come in handy. I happen to have one by Pixie. This is the sun mist. And you just shake it and then you spray it. And then the mist rains down on your face and your nose. Amazing. It just tops up your protection. I would never rely on this as a sole protection if I'm going to the beach. This is for I leave the office and go home after a day of work and I apply this or I go out in my lunch break. The second thing I personally need to address but most people need to focus a little more on in the summertime is oil control. And this is where you pick your skincare based on ingredients that are proven to help with sebum control. The one that I like the most for this is the, the Ordinary Niacinamide and Sink because Niacinamide helps with hyperpigmentation that I'll address a little later and with oil control and sink helps with oil control but there are other things like the Bioderma Shine Control Moisturizer actually contains Methyl Metacrylat Cospolymere which are kind of little beads that absorb the oil and help you stay matte for longer. With all the SPF that you have slathered on your face and the sweat and the dirt that I mentioned earlier, cleansing becomes even more important. But 
don't make the mistake and go in for those harsh alcohol-based, sulfate-based cleansers because they will disrupt your skin's barrier and make it more prone to dehydration. I say go for oils because oil helps dissolve oil and one that I love for my first cleanse is the, the Body Shop Chamomile Silky Cleansing Oil and in the summer I tend to focus on purifying cleansers. I love the Sunday Riley Ceramic Slip one or the Indie Lee Brightening Toner but I would recommend these two to more normal to oily skins. If your skin is dry go for something um, purifying but more gentle like the Ostia Renaissance Cleansing Gel or the Omorovica Thermal Cleansing Balm which are less dehydrating and more soothing. Another one it would be the Pixie Rose Cream Cleanser which I love for the winter time. Don't be fooled by rose cream cleanser, it neither does it smell of roses nor is it actually a cream cleanser but it has more of a purifying effect because it has clay in it so it's amazing if your skin is kind of sensitive but you want some purifying action. Hydration as I said is key but I personally don't like hyaluronic acid serums in the summertime because hyaluronic acid can leave a little bit of a tacky feeling on your skin and I just can't deal with that in summer. So I rely on face mists for hydration, um, like thermal water sprays like the Evian or if you want more fancy, the Queen of Hungary face mists or sitting in between from price wise the Caudalia grape water. Don't be fooled, I used to think that anyway, but thermal water is not just bottled water. The minerals included in thermal water are actually the same as the natural moisturizing factors in your skin. So they replenish the natural moisturizing factors in your skin and they are proven to soothe and to act anti-inflammatory, which is great after a day spent outside in the sun. And they are incredibly refreshing, not only in the sun, but even if you're sitting there with studio light shining on your face. Another thing that you need to keep in mind in the summer is don't do overdo it on the actives. With the sun exposure and the UV rays, your skin is probably a little irritated anyway, so stick with very gentle actives. I won't tell you to stop using your acids or your retinols throughout the day, just be mindful, wear your SPF and go for something that is gentle, like the Dr. Don Dennis Gold's Cerulic Acid Retinal Brightening Solution. Works great on my hyperpigmentation, but never irritates my skin. And put an emphasis on other ingredients that attack hyperpigmentation, like the, the ordinary uh, nice limited zinc that I showed earlier, or, very important, vitamin C. I personally love this La Roche-Posay Redermic C Anti-Wrinkle Firming Moisturizing Filler. It's lightweight, I use it as an, my nighttime moisturizer. Which kind of ties in with the next tip, choose your moisturizers wisely. You don't want any heavy exclusive night cream on your skin in the summertime. Most of us can focus on uh, lightweight things like if that contains a lot of emollients, and if you're not sure what the difference between emollients and exclusives is, I have a video that I'm going to link up there. This one, which is more of a lotion kind, is enough for me in the, at night. And if I use anything under my SPF, which I don't always do, I opt for something like the Pixie Rose Caviar Essence, which is not an essence, but a really hydrating, emollient-rich face cream. The last thing you need to focus on, and that sums up my video, which is already way too long. I'm sorry but I could ramble about skincare all day long and now I'm looking for... where did I put it? Ah, there you go. This is the Emma Sun Vitamin E Skin Smoothing Serum and I picked that as an example for antioxidant rich serums. This one has a ton of antioxidants, it has vitamin E, vitamin C and antioxidants are really necessary to help repair the damage the sun does to your skin. And it's not only the antioxidants that you apply topically as much as I would love to. Don't only eat ice cream, eat your fruits, eat your vegetables because that's an amazing source of um, antioxidants. And oh, very important, don't be fooled by repair sun damage. This is not a replacement for sunscreen. The sun damage to your DNA can't be repaired by topically or orally applied antioxidants. This is for oxidative stress that happens despite wearing sunscreen, not instead. 
don't fall for natural sunscreen alternative. You'll burn, you'll get wrinkles, you'll get skin cancer. And that's it. That's how I adapt my skincare routine to the summer and the heat. Leave your tips, especially for other skin types than mine. I'm mature, uh, still oily and acne prone down in the comments below so we can learn from each other. Make sure to subscribe for further content, like if you enjoyed the video, and I'm going to see you all very soon with another video. Bye! Oh, um, of course, ring the bell to get notifications, and put my videos on your watch later list, and share them with friends, and thank you for being here.